Fantastic four hour race. Um, our winners from pole position, the number 22 United All Sports, Orica Gibson, Phil Hansen, Philippe Albuquerque. Guys, congratulations. One year ago, you, you, Phil, you took your first LMP2 win uh, a year later, and you did an entire four hours this time, so two hours. So, a fantastic race. It wasn't easy, but you led from pole positions. Talk us through those first few laps and uh, your stint, your yeah. first stint. I mean, is this one? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's never a straightforward race, especially in the LMS. There's always things that come up. Um, at the start, it was just important to maintain the lead. Um, and we did so until we uh, had the, the change of strategy, basically. Um, but yeah, the, the, the first few laps were pretty well maintained. I pulled out a little gap and did my job. Um, we were just trying to conserve tyres because uh, we all know that Spa is really abrasive and the uh, tyre deck tends to be the biggest issue in the race. This has been a difficult year for you guys, because obviously switching from the Ligier to the Orica, but it's suddenly starting to come good, isn't it, at the end of the season? Yeah, I mean... Um, it was always tough for us in the Legion for the last couple of years. Um, like you said, last year we had a lot of luck with uh, with the weather and the, the timing of the race being cancelled, being a red flag. So um, it's nice to come back and win it properly. But at the same time, ever since we moved to the Oracle, we, we found ourselves right at the front. I think we've done something stupid like win, or <laughs> win, been fastest in all the practice sessions, yeah, win the practice. Um, but like we experienced at Silverson, it doesn't matter because uh, in the race we had some really bad luck with electronic issues in both WEC and LMS. Um, so that won't makes this race even more sweet of a victory. Philippe, we head to Porto now next after your thing, but this race you had an issue with the puncture and then the red 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 light being on in the pit lane. Talk us through your stint and how you fought your way back up to the front. Yeah, it's it's like I told them, like uh, when we are the fastest or when we are fast, there is it's never an easy win. It never is, and uh, no matter what, if you are fast or whatever. So, it, and it just happened, we had a great pace and we showed the whole weekend, we showed qualifying, we showed in a race, but again, you know, there is always something happening so in endurance. We, I had a puncture in, in the, my first stint, which changed our strategy and we could not go until the end with the same pit stops as the others. Then we had to pit on safety car, which then we got stuck with the red light. Uh, so we were seeing the race going backwards and actually were dropped me to P9. But luckily, we came back again to the race with a good strategy as well with the safety car, full cost yellow, put us back on the lead on the front, and uh, I must say as well that Phil did a make a job in the beginning and going to the end, dealing with the pressure, closing down the gaps to the guys in the front. And um, again, what I'm happy about is like now we are chasing, not being chased, and uh, this is the most uh, what we can look for, and we can then only depend on ourselves and whatever uh, hurdle that we have, um, we're just going to go over and keep chasing the lead. So, and today was exactly that. United did a mega job, especially after Silverstone, where we were unlucky, but we showed that we can do it. And uh, here was a perfect weekend. Now, I didn't have this for a long time, which is full position, fastest lap, win, just no doubt. I need to ask you about Portimao. We go to your home country. I know it's different end of the country for you from where you live but it's still your home race and it's a very different track to what you've got here isn't it yeah yeah it's very different and again i think we only depend on ourselves to to win the race uh, i think we have a brilliant car we are understanding more about uh, this car and i'm still finding out how the, this car to race because the tire degradation it's, it's way different than what i'm used to um, I think it's going to be great uh, obviously i'm going to try to push for people to be there obviously the intention it's put it always me uh, a little bit under more pressure. But uh, again, last year we won Derek there. So obviously we want to do exactly as last year. So win Spa and then win Portimao again. So let's, let's try to do as well the pole position. <laughs> obviously we've got Japan for WC before then. Yeah, exactly. So another win there. <laughs> we try. Guys, congratulations. Um, in, in the LMB3 league, uh, winners, um, I think it was a bit of a surprise to everybody because uh, we weren't watching what you guys were up to, but that was a fantastic result for the number 11, your international, Ligier Gibson, uh, sorry, Nissan. Uh, Jens Pettersson, Mikkel Jensen. Mikkel, you started the race and you finished the race. I'm not going to ask you at the start. I want to know what happened at the end. What, you were third coming on the last lap and then you came across the line first. What happened? Uh, don't ask me. I was in the car. I have no idea. <laughs> so... Uh, um, we pitted on the green, the others pitted on the full because it came right after our pit stop. We were short on fuel because we pitted early in the start of the race. So we couldn't, we had no choice, we had to pit. Uh, that hurt us a lot. Uh, but somehow, 
I don't know how we managed. We came back in the end. Uh, I know Inter Europol had a had a puncture, um, but I've never done a race like this. Going into the last lap in P3, passing one in Stavelot, passing the next in Bostop, and then winning the race. So uh, perfect days for us. A nice Everything. feeling. Great job from the team. They they fight really hard for this, and, and now we're back in in contention of the championship, uh, having the same points as as the leaders. So. Yeah, Jens, um, you've, come, you, you've joined this year with Mikkel as the um, Michelin Le Mans Cup champion. You've come here and now you're challenging now, for leading, going into the last race um, for the ELMS LMP3. That was a, a roller coaster race in more ways than one. Talk us through your part and how you're feeling at the moment. Yeah, when I stepped out of the car, I, <clears throat> I didn't expect to win here because, um, yeah, when I looked on the screen being on P7, um, that's not possible anymore. But then I saw everyone doing slow laps due to track conditions. Yeah, and at the end, uh, other teams had to pit as well for a few. And yeah, we were able to win them. And yeah, it's just fantastic. That's your third win as well. And considering how the season started with the car, you had to borrow a car, then it was all sorts of stuff going on with the team. And the team have done a mega job, haven't they? Because considering where we started at the beginning of the year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Euro International is a fantastic team. Antonio Ferrari is putting a lot of effort to make this possible. We can only thank him, thank him a lot. And yeah, so far we have been quite dominant. As you said, from five races we won three, one second. Unfortunately, we had an engine blow up at Barcelona, which cost us dearly. But still, everything is possible, and yeah, we're looking forward to Portimao now. Well, thank you for setting up a, a, a brilliant uh, season finale with the Euro Interpol guys. So, thank you very much indeed. And the number 51 lose its race in Ferrari 488 GT, our 2019 champions, guys. Congratulations. Brand new uh, debut for the team this year and came here and you've won. So, Fabien, you started the race, so we'll start with you. Um, how are you feeling after that fantastic performance? Yeah, it's incredible for me because um, one year ago I was uh, really uh, an amateur driver, you know. So being here and won the championship with these two, two guys is incredible for me. So yeah. I, I can describe, I have no words. You started the race, you were behind the number seven. Tell what happened at the start because you came out of the first lap in the lead. So can you talk us through the start? Yeah, I had a good run uh, out of uh, Redillon and I could uh, take the slipstream of the Porsche and then he covered the inside. But there was an, uh, an LMP3 on the, right, on the left, so I take the toe of the LMP3 and I could uh, overtake him in the uh, outside in Lecon. So that was a good move. Nicholas, you took over the car. Um, talk us through your part and again, how you're feeling becoming the 20, 2019 European Le Mans Series GTE champion. Yeah, definitely one of the, the toughest races I've ever done. I mean, um, coming out um, behind a lot of the LMP3 cars, fighting with the Porsche as well. So there was quite a lot of, uh, of pressure at, uh, at one stage of the race, um, of my stint. Uh, but yeah, all the overtakings and so on went, went pretty smooth and um, I managed to, to stay in front, obviously. And uh, yeah, like, like, uh, like Fabian said, it, it's, it's an amazing feeling. I mean, uh, in incredible even to, to win um, the championship with one race to go. And uh, I think we can be very, very proud of ourselves. And uh, I think we've all done a very good uh, job within the team. Does that take the pressure off now for Portimao? I mean, we will still go and try and go for the win, but uh, definitely very nice to, to seal the championship already. Brilliant. Alessandro Peregrini, Ali, congratulations. 2017 FIWC World Champion, FIA World Champion, 2019 24 Hours Le Mans Champion, and now 2019 European Le Mans Series Champion. Not a bad year. Uh, of course not. I'm very happy. I'm happy for myself. For these two guys, they are very quick. And uh, for Ludwig Racing, the team just born two years ago, and we won uh, two championships in two years, so it's something unbelievable. And uh, Ferrari allowed this, and I have to say thanks to them. But uh, it's a special feeling, and now we have uh, completely free to go to Portimao to enjoy the race, to try to win, of course, like every race, but uh, with uh, the mind completely free. You didn't have it easy at the end, though, because obviously Ricardo was giving you a hard time behind you. So how were you coping with those last five, ten laps? Because you know, the Porsche was really pushing you hard. Yes, the, the Porsche was really close to me. Then I managed to have a gap. Then after the uh, four there was a little bit slower in uh, in terms of speed, 
and I lost everything basically. And the last three, four laps, I have to to, to push again to try to uh, to create another small gap to just enough to win. But uh, honestly, I'm get used to this uh, in WC. is always tough. Uh, I always am one very close behind, so I had to. To do, to do my job, don't make any mistake. The car was great, and uh, this was the key. To the key together with the lineup, uh, it was the key the, of the success of today, but also for the season.